Hi folks, I'm Jennifer Lau, Master Gardener and longtime employee at English Gardens here in Royal Oak, Michigan. You know, horticulture professionals get asked a lot of different questions because, you know, plant science is a big field. But there are some topics that repeatedly come up over the years. One of them is how do I repot my house plant? So, let's take a couple minutes and demonstrate step by step so you feel confident doing this yourself. First off, how do you know it's time for a new home for your plant? Well, there are several ways to tell you, but let's keep it general. Does the plant simply look like it's a little large or crowded? If you're suspicious, pull it out of its pot. It's easy to do. Does it look like this, a mass of roots? It's probably time. So first thing we have to consider is the size of pot that it's in right now. I know that this is a six inch plant, but you may not know that. We're gonna bring a tape measure. We're gonna see over the top, across the diameter of the pot, it's six inches wide. I want it to go into something a little bit bigger, but I don't want it to go into this humongous pot and ask it to run a marathon, for heaven's sakes, trying to grow itself into that. Bad things can happen, trust me. So we're just gonna go a little bit bigger. Generally speaking, it's just a couple of inches. This is an eight inch pot. I know because I have my handy dandy measuring tape and I see that it's eight inches. First of all, pick a plant that makes you feel good. It might be a different color, it might be a different style. You know what I do? I take the plant and I set it inside and I see if it makes me feel good because that's what we want here. I'm choosing this one because it's black, goes with everything, it's modern, it's sleek, it's simple. It's what to my tastes are. You pick whichever you like. But that's a handy dandy little test, just setting it inside first. Because I've wisely selected a pot with a hole in the bottom, because remember, only swamp plants want to grow in a mass of water. They want the drainage. But things can happen. Holes can get plugged up, roots grow, gravity happens. And things can get plugged up. I'm a person that asks for no trouble, so I prepare. I'm going to put some rocks in the bottom. That'll just cover the hole so that nothing gets plugged up. I'm using lava rocks because they're lightweight. So I'm just going to have enough in the bottom to cover the hole so that it doesn't get all smooshed up in there. And next I'm going to place the plant inside. I'm going to see how it looks. Now of course it's a little tippy at the moment. But there it is straight. It looks good. It's good level. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to add a little fresh soil. I'm not going to fill it up all the way yet. For soil, I'm using something light. You know, I know it seems natural to use Mother Nature because she grows things, but it's too heavy. Mother Nature is in a large, expansive area. It moves. There's rocks. There's twigs. There's oxygen. In this little condensed area, you need something a little bit lighter than that. In fact, a lot lighter than this. You want to use potting soil and you want to use a light potting soil. This is one I like. We just pour a little bit in there just to get it all settled. And then I'm gonna check the level one more time. This is because whatever's had air wants air. Whatever's been covered wants to be covered. I wanna set it at the same exact level. You avoid a lot of problems if you do it this way. Just take that extra step. Test it first, make sure it's at the right level. It is fabulous. Next, it's ready for its home. I'm gonna take it out of the pot. Now remember when we looked earlier, we saw that there was this mass of roots, one of the indications that it's time for a little bit more root growth. Whenever you plant anything, I want to loosen this up a little bit. You can do this with your hands like this. It moves easy enough. I want it to start to grow in an outward direction to get used to its new home, which is bigger, remember? So by simply moving this around like this, it makes it feel like an animal's come in to dig nearby it. I mean, after all, why is the earth moving? This is natural and normal to all plants. So this is a way in which we just make sure once it starts growing, it doesn't grow in that same circular pattern. So I'm gonna set it inside of its new home, and then I'm gonna fill it up with a little bit more soil. Being someone who does this every day, I get my hands dirty. But you feel free to use a pair of gloves. I'm gonna set it around each of the sides just to kind of settle it in there. I'm gonna tamp it down just a little bit, but I don't wanna smoosh it to death. It needs oxygen. 
but I want it to be settled enough. Now there's going to be little air pockets in here. First thing I'm going to do is give it a little water just to kind of get things settled up a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm not going to water it full force because I want it to settle first and see if we need to magically add a little bit more soil because the water's moved some things around and sure enough I need to add a little bit. At this point in time I am going to add a little fertilizer. Remember that when we loosened the roots and took it out of its old home and gave it new space to grow, it's going to feel like an animal's digging it. Oh, I better hurry up and grow in case it eats half of me. Completely normal. Remember, all plants are eaten by animals. So this is okay. This doesn't stress the plant out. I'm going to use a little fertilizer to make sure that it's got enough juice to get itself going. There's many good fertilizers. This is one I use. It's good for uh, plants with flowers as well as uh, indoor potting plants. It's so easy. It comes in a little squirt bottle here. I just put a dropper full in the water. Easy. I always go for easy. You don't have to make things difficult. And then I'm going to water it really well. So I'm going to give it a good drink until some water falls out the bottom. And then I know that all those little baby roots on the bottom of the plant have gotten some moisture. Now going forward, remember, now that it has more soil, it's going to hold in a little bit more water. It might be a little bit longer. Try to stop yourself from going into the habit of saying, I'm going to water this every single week because it's going to be different now. Check it. There are easy ways to check it. I use this nice water meter that we get here at the store. It's very accurate and it's simple. Make your life simple. You stick it in and it immediately has a gauge on here and it tells you whether it's got water or whether it doesn't. Because remember, I want to check what's happening down here as well as what's happening on the top. This is the easiest way to prevent root rot and that's more common than what you think. So save yourself. Prepare. So if you don't happen to have one of these and you need to test, you know what a quick, easy, easy check is? Use a pencil, number two pencil, not a mechanical pencil because I want this wood on here. Cedar wood is very sensitive to water. That's most often what these are made out of. So it's the same process. I'm gonna stick it in halfway into the pot. Notice the color of the pencil. If I stick it in halfway into the pot and bring it back up again, look how the wood is darkened. That means there's water down there. Don't touch it. Follow the pencil. It's right every time. Now this wasn't as hard as what you thought, was it? You can do this. If you live in the area, stop by in any time. We'll be here to help you. Make life beautiful. We'll see you in the store.